Welcome everyone again this beautiful Sunday morning. We are expecting the Lord to bless us. We have, a, as usual, a two-part uh, church service here. We have the first part in the preaching, and then the second part, as it says in Acts chapter 2, the last part of it. I'll just quickly read that so we don't forget what that is. Uh, it says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Thank God for that. This morning, he guessed it right. I am preaching about Father's Day. First of all, I wish everyone here and everyone in the whole wide world a very happy Father's Day. Well, I think I'll just interrupt here a little bit and just ask my wife to come up so that you know that I have a wife and that you know who she is so that later on when you see her, you, she doesn't have to introduce herself every time. Then you know she is the pastor's wife. This is my wife, Martha. We married, we married a very long time ago. We married when I was 19 and she was 18. I'm sorry, but not everybody is mature enough by that time, but we were. So we were just ready to get married, 19 and 18. So I, if I do the math right, I think we've been married like for 38 years or something like that. And how many? going to be 38, she says. She's keeping track, or 39. I got news for you. If you have the Lord in your marriage, it just gets better and better and better. Yes. All right, turn in your Bibles to Genesis 18, verse 17 through 19, I'll condense it just a bit, but it will be the words that are in there. It says, and the Lord said, for I know him, talking about Abraham, I know Abraham that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Now, if I knew for sure that my sons were both close by here, I would make them come up here. How far away are they? Well, it might not work. He's coming? Where is he? All right. How about you run a little bit? I still command my children as long after they are married. So, Sister Martha and I have two boys. Herbert and Davy. Today is Father's Day. These are my bodyguards. These are my sons. These are my very close friends. And by the grace of God, I have never stopped commending them in the ways of the Lord. I tell them what they must do. They must follow God. And they have never taken it wrong. They know that's why their lives are successful. Because it, has, it takes serving God. Amen. I thank Amen. God for these my sons. And I promise next Sunday I won't bring them up here. That was kind of a trick. I just want to make sure that you knew I'm a father because it means more if you know that I'm a father about what I'm going to say here. So from God, to, from God the Father proceeded all the beauties of this world. The trees that you see, the clouds that you see, everything proceeded from God the Father. 
I'm actually one of those old-fashioned preachers. I actually believe in God. I don't know what you're going to think of me now. I believe, I don't believe in a seven-day creation. I believe in six-day creation. I actually believe that God did it in six days. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. People say, I cannot understand that. I'm so old-fashioned in my preaching that I believe that Jonah actually was in the whale's belly. I believe that God, if God had said Jonah was to swallow the whale, that that would have happened too. Is that part of Father's Day? Yes, we'll go on. From God the Father proceeded all the beauties of this world, including his most prized creation, mankind, the family of God. I want to give credit where credit is due. I have this week, uh, in the last couple of days, enjoyed preparing for this morning's message. And I am a very, actually, I think I'm one of the most privileged persons on earth. So I have a powerful team around me, and that includes fellow apostles, that includes fellow pastors, that includes fellow ministers, that includes fellow teachers. And then when I work on a message, I just ask them to help me work. Then I tell them, look, this is what we're working on. Why don't you help me pray? Why don't you help me think? What do we do about this topic? So this morning, uh, not everything that I'm going to say, in case, in case you feel offended, it's most likely a part that I didn't think about. It's most likely something that somebody else. I won't mention their names for their safety and security, but what I will do if the credit goes to them, if your offense credits them, talk to me after service and I'll let you know who it was. Amen. Problem is, some of them aren't here. So you'll have to wait till the border opens up. Any idea when that happens? Does anyone know when our border finally opens? I know it's Father's Day, but I'm just curious. When will that open up so that we can finally live a human life again? Amen. Family stability is an essential component of social st stability and social protection. In many developing countries... The family is the only form of social protection. Listen to this. In developed countries, the breakdown of the family is causing new and unforeseen challenges to social protection. We have presently, as I speak, we have a breakdown of families. That's right. That's right. And I am actively involved and actively preaching the opposite. You will see in the congregation here, you will see, you will hear in my preaching, we are actively fighting for God's structure for the family unit. Yes, the greatest attack in 2021, would you like to know what that is? The greatest attack in 2021 is an attack on man. And I might add burly man. What you see today, what you see in society today is a direct result of breaking down of masculinity. What's it called? Masculinity. Masculinity is breaking down in this time that we're living in. I've got news for you, not in this man. Masculinity is not breaking down in this man. That's a fact. Now, masculinity and femininity are not at war. I wish, I wish everyone knew what that meant. Masculinity and femininity, am I saying it right? Don't correct me afterwards, do it now. Masculinity and femininity are not at war. They complement each other. Wow. Yes, Wife, I think you're due again to come up here. If she turns white, bring her water. 
masculinity and femininity are not at war. Right. They complement each other. Yeah. Yes. Just don't mix them up. That might cause a war. Yes, sir. Right. So for 38 years, I have known this person as a feminine person. And I am a masculine person. Preacher, that's a little old-fashioned. I told you I'm an old-fashioned preacher. So we have a masculine and a feminine person here. It's not hard. There's only two. I couldn't care less who says what. There is only two, masculine and feminine. Don't ever let anybody confuse you. There's nothing confusing about the wife, stay here. There's nothing confusing about that. Everyone knows, look at her. She's feminine. I'm masculine. Listen to my voice. Look at my beard. Look like a male lion. You got it? But I am so happy that she's not like me. I don't want two burly men in my house. I want one that's good enough. And I want a beautiful, beautiful, God-given, feminine wife in my house. We complement one another. We often look at each other. You don't feel that we at least pretend, okay? Yeah. So we often look at each other, and she says, I'm so glad you are a man. And I look at her, I'm so glad you're a woman. True. This is how God made it. Yes. Yes. This is kind of how Adam and Eve looked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, when a father feels his God-given place, it enhances the mother's place. Did we get that? When a father takes his place in the home, it enhances. What's another word? You all that are so intelligent, what's another word for enhancing? Just say it. Complimenting it. When the father takes his place in the home, he compliments her place. And my wife and I, we're not like some of you couples. We're not like some of you where you're almost the same and both extremely choleric and, and whatnot. I am this, and she's something totally different. There was a reason why I, with God's help, picked her. I did not want anybody that was just like me. Everybody's quiet. Thank you. Let me read this as somebody sent this to me. Well, before I do, I want to first mention this. No matter what, mother is always mother. There's nothing, there's nothing that nobody that can replace mom. I don't know about you, but later on when we eat together or even during service, if I hear a baby cry, the first thing I'm thinking is, could somebody do us a huge favor and find the mother? Could we just find the mother? It seems to me when the child approaches the mother, they can already feel the electricity. They can already feel the connection. And already they are calmed down. I can never take her place. Never. Amen. I've tried a little bit a couple of times and I gave up instantly. I just know that's not me. And then she tried a couple of times to do, take, do my place. Once, all of a sudden, she asked me, husband, could I decide today? I said, absolutely, you can decide today. Why not? She can also make decisions, right? Our, our, our wives aren't under our feet. They are by our side. They were taken from Adam's side, not from here. Our women are not under our feet. They are by our side. She said, husband, can I make a decision today? I said, absolutely. She looks at me and she said, what should I decide? <laughs> I said, whatever you want to decide. Well, can you help me? I said, sure, I can help you. Brother, we complement 
one another big time. Let me read this. By the devil emasculating. Do you know what emasculate means? By the devil emasculating the man over the past several decades. Brethren, just so you know, what we're facing right now did not happen overnight. This trouble that we are in right now did not happen overnight. It has been working for decades. I believe I could safely say Bill Gates' biggest burden is to emasculate the man and to make them all totally useless and just where they will just walk around and don't know how to talk and don't know how to walk. I'll tell you one thing. We've got some burly man left over. I don't want to offend the woman, otherwise I would have quickly called up the burly man again. But if I do that, the woman will say, what's this? Last time he called him up and now he did it again. So let's stay everybody seated. By the devil emasculating the man over the past several decades, it has made, it has made society an easy prey to fall under this COVID agenda or otherwise called pandemic theater and government oppression. Men in this pandemic so-called agenda, uh, government oppression, men should be leading the charge right now, not being, not being muzzled by masks. I haven't said this before, but I'll say it again, this, I'll say it this morning. There's a reason why I don't wear a mask. Because I want everyone to know that I am not emasculated. I want everyone to know that I am a burly man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wore a mask in a factory that I worked on at 345 Arvin Avenue in Stony Creek, Ontario. Worked there for many years. I always wore a mask because I was protecting my lungs from silica sand. Because I was working with open silica sand. I thank God that I wore a mask. But I also thank God I never took that mask home. Yes, sir. I left it where it belonged. Amen. And if right now we had major smoke coming over here, I'll go find a mask. It'll be hard to find because I've despised them so much. It'd be hard to find one. But if there's smoke coming over here or something else and I need a mask, let's go get the mask. But what is this childish thing that all of a sudden we all bow down and we all follow Mr. Gates in a mask? And we all supposed to vaccinate our children except he doesn't his. Somebody told me, no charge for this one. Somebody told me that if I get vaccinated, I want it out of the same bottle as Joe Biden. I got the point, did you? When men stand in the place where they need to be under God, I said when men stand in the place where they need to be under God, there can be no oppression. When a man is in his place, there is no oppression in the home, there's no oppression in the church, there's no oppression in the government. Someone that's not on this parking lot, somebody that's listening in for some other reasons might say, Pastor, I disagree. I don't care. <laughs> Where there is oppression, men are out of their place. A true father, a true man provides security, safety, stability, Protection, direction, guidance. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard the term the uh, founding fathers? Have you ever heard the term the founding fathers? I somehow, I hope I'm not alone. I hope you all agree. I, when I think of the founding fathers, I think of burly men. 
when I think of the founding fathers, I don't think of girly man. I don't think I, I, I don't think of the founding fathers being some flimsy, flapsy noodle back that can't say anything, can't do anything. When I think of the founding fathers, I see a hatchet in their hand, I, I, not to hit somebody, but to clear the path. They were called trailblazers. I wish I could have that group of men over there. I wish I could, call, I could have them, that group of men right there. I wish you would run this way and join me here. I want these men to be trailblazers. I want these men to know what it means to stand up. Don't be a noodle back. Stand up for what is right and be a trailblazer so that other people may follow you. And if you ever marry, I guess he's next. If you ever marry, lead the way like a godly father. Know how to pray and know how to take her under your wings and be the leader as you need to be and have her by your side, loving and kind. You may run back. Let's see how fast you can do it. So these were, that when we hear about the founding fathers, these were people that were trailblazers, like I said. These were people that put their foot down and said, we need this, and we need this. And one of them said, we need to be free Canadians, free to worship God. I'm so sorry, I don't know how not to be offensive. Then I look at our leaders today, and I have to say the truth, what noodlebacks. Pastor, you have some proof? Yes, it's about a week old. Is that good enough? I'll read to you. I'll read to you the exact words that our, uh, our uh, high up G7 leaders decide around the table. Would you like to hear what they said? I'll read it word for word. This is what one of the leaders said as he sat around the table with the others. And our prime minister was right there. They want us to be sure that we are beating the pandemic together and discussing how we'll ever, never have a repeat of what we've seen, but also that we're building back better together and building back greener and building back fairer and building back more equal and in a more gender neutral and perhaps a more feminine way. How about that? He said, he said, and building back uh, in a more gender neutral and perhaps a more feminine way. How about that? May I answer? He said, how about that? I guess he expects Pastor Hilderman to answer or Mr. Johnson, how about that? No, thanks, sir. You, you may keep your pink hat. No thanks, Mr. Johnson, not interested. And I wish, oh, I wish so much, oh, I wish so much that at that round table last week at the G7, I wish so much we had had one of our founding fathers sitting there. Yes, and when one of our founding fathers would have heard, and he says, in a more gender neutral and perhaps a more feminine way, how about that? And I think our founding fathers would have said, get out of here, you noodle back. But I guess if there is no burly man left around the table, maybe a girl needs to take over and show the burly man what to do. I don't know. Good thing I wasn't there. Aren't you glad? I'd be in jail for sure. There would be all doubt removed. We need masculine men that take charge of the community. Women, get ready. 
We need feminine women that call on masculine men to take their place. So, in the past 15 months, I've tried really hard to show you that there is masculine man. So far, I succeeded. No woman has come up to me and said, Sir, since you act so girly, could I preach? And I'll tell you one thing, tell you one thing. God has used and God is using women in the church. When the disciples were kind of curling up, when the disciples were kind of afraid, like a man is not supposed to be, sometimes the temptation of fear might come, but then at least we fake it. If you are somewhat afraid, at least stand up to that dog. Yes, sir. We need feminine women that call on masculine men to take their place. We need strong, proper functioning family units. Well, let me say, I don't think I finished the other thing. When the disciples were kind of afraid, Somebody by the name of Mary came and boldly proclaimed one of the world's ever best messages. You know what she preached? She looked at those men and she said, he is risen. What do you mean, Mary? What do you mean? She said, he is risen. Come, I'll show you. Joshua spoke and he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Folks, this is kind of new. This is kind of kind of gone out, the, out by, by the have fallen by the wayside. That a father leads his children. Listen, since when is a six-year-old supposed to decide if they are a boy or a girl? Folks, brother, pa pastor, pastor, this is not very popular to preach. I'm not a popular preacher. I'm a preacher. I don't need any other titles. Let's just say it like it is. A good father, a good father makes sure that that question never comes up in the home. Daddy, am I a boy or a girl? Let's check your braids. Let's find out. And oh, we have such wonderful things to tell our little girls. Just what all the Lord has in store for them. What all they will be. Listen, we compliment them. They, they are no lesser worth. Listen, woman, you are no less worth than the man. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And you aren't under our feet. You are by our side. And I'll say something for the man to remember. Make sure you don't forget this. Sometimes she's right and you're wrong. I knew they would like it. Maybe that just happened to me, but, well, I know it happened to Abraham too. God told Abraham, you know what? What Sarah is telling you is actually the way to go about it. Let's just do that. Sarah wasn't trying to say, well, now I'm the masculine and you are the feminine. And I uh, believe you me, Abraham no, had no trace of feminist, femini what's it called? Femininity. Abraham had none of that in him. None of that. You can look at his life, read all, of, all, of, all about Abraham. There was nothing. But there was enough in Abraham that when God said, do what she says. And you know what? Sometimes my wife has told me something. Let's hope it's not very many times, but I know there was for sure sometimes. She said, this is what you should do, husband. I said, okay, don't tell everybody else, but I'll listen to you. <laughs> I, di I didn't say that, but you know what I mean. Brethren, I am called of God to have this beard, not her. And if you don't have a beard, don't worry about it. But if you can grow one, you might want to see if it grows. Just so that all doubt is removed in 2021 that you are against Mr. Johnson. Sorry, Mr. Johnson. We don't want your pink hat. We're not interested. And I wish one of our founding fathers had been at the round table. I wish one of them had been there. They would have. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that, that Mr. Johnson had a pink hat. He was just acting like it. But I'm saying if the founding fathers would have been there, they would have whacked that thing out of his hand. And I wish our prime minister had, even at his age.
even at his age. I wish our prime minister's favorite color wasn't pink. Might that be London Free Press headlines? <laughs> Pastor Hildebrand knows something that we all don't know, that our Prime Minister's favorite color is pink. <laughs> I don't know that it is. I'm just saying. And, and you know what I'm talking about. All right. A real father is a leader. The destiny, fathers, fathers, please. The destiny of your children is in your hands. Where your children are going to end up is in your hands. Where my boys are today is in my hands. I could start, sister, I could today start talking different, start acting different. And we've seen it not that long ago. People start, start acting in a certain way, and guess where their boys go? Guess where their children go? It is up to the father to direct their paths. But pastor, your sons are 30, I don't know how old they are. All I know is one was born in 1983 and the other one was born in 1986. I try to remember those things that never change. How old they are that keeps changing all the time. But it never changes when they were born. So I know one was born in 1983, one was born in 1986. Brethren, I am, by the way, by the way, I get so many titles added to my name. One time I'm a cult leader and then I'm, I'm a dictator. I don't know what else I am. But by the grace of God, I am leading my family in the right way. And I will never regret that. I will never regret that. I need to be a father, and I want to teach them to be fathers. Lead your family. Give them direction. Give them security. Give them stability. Since when? When prayer is needed. I think it was just this week. One of our people had a, had a the daughter was sick, remember? And we set that, sent that out in our, in our, in our chat. Uh, pray for them. I was glad. I was glad how the father took the initiative. And the father said, could you pray for my daughter? Could you pray for my daughter? Oh, fathers, when there's a need in the family, we as fathers are the first to kneel by the bedside and pray. Of course, I'm glad for my wife that she can pray. But she doesn't have to beg me and, and, and beg this noodle back to see if I would at least be in the same room when she prays. You can say amen to that. A real father is a leader. The destiny of your children is in your hands. You pay a high price when you deprive a child of a godly home and of a godly father, a father who connects his children with God. Oh, I don't know what makes me more sad than to look in this world and to see what is happening, how the fathers are failing left and right. But you know what? It's not too late. Pastor, I'm 65. Start being a father now. The last year of your life, the last five years, listen, there's hope for you. Start this morning. But pastor, I've been a noodle back times four. Listen, we can erase the four this morning and you can become a strong noodle. And then we will be, become like concrete. I'm saying in leading, giving direction. Women, I'm sorry. I'm sorry how this world has failed you. No wonder, no wonder you're so frustrated. No wonder you're looking at it and wondering, is there anybody that can do something about it? Yes, by the grace of God, I can. Man, let's stand up, let's do it. Yes. Now, I don't want to dwell on this point long, but I do want to tell you something. I do want to show you what it looks like when we reverse the roles. Okay. When Johnny rules mom, you know what, do you, do you all know that term? When we say Johnny, that means that little, that little child in the home. Have you ever seen what it looks like when you're at the store somewhere and you see Johnny rules the home? Don't play innocent, you've seen it. You've seen it. Johnny is like this tall and they come into the store and he says, I want this, that, this, that. And mom, dad, bless that noodle back. Dad stands behind the body. Oh, our credit card is full already, and I don't know. Hopefully, we can order a new one this week. Johnny, like, how much is that? 
That's $100. Daddy, put that in there. Okay. Mommy says, Daddy, put that in there. So Johnny rules mom. Mom rules John. And John blames mommy and Johnny. What's this situation? Look at our debt situation. Well, look, I don't ever want my wife come to me and say, Henry. I won't tell you what she calls me. She has all kinds of names for me. I never want her to come to me and say, husband, what are we going to do with our debt? I'd feel so emasculated. I would feel so let down. I would feel like, what have I done in my life? I want my wife to go to bed every night knowing the finances are fine. And by the way, by the way, women don't get too scared. By the way, if you are more inclined to do finances, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. My wife isn't, and I'm glad for that. So uh, if you are inclined to do finances, not a problem, not a problem. But it kind of looks like a noodle back if he's in the store pushing the, the buggy. And she says, yeah, yeah, husband, yeah, yeah, I know. We've got three more credit cards that we can fill up. And by the way, if the credit is available there, my understanding is we should fill it up. Well, that's not my understanding. Just watch and see if anybody got it. When the roles in the family get reversed, then we have what we see in society today. So today we're preaching about Father's Day. Today we're preaching what does it mean for a father to be a father. If father and mother are in their place, it's guaranteed happiness. I said, if father and mother are in their place, pastor, really, really? Yes, 100% guaranteed. If father and mother are in their respective places, it's guaranteed happiness. So in closing, Fathers, let's be real fathers. Man, let's be man. Don't wait for our prime minister. Oh, wouldn't it be beautiful if our prime premier, I'm sorry, I, I know people don't like it if you look across the border, but sometimes the grass is greener on the other side. I, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a premier that had half the guts, I don't know how to say it nicer, that had half the guts that Christy Nome has in South Dakota? I mean, if, if Christy Nome is that her name? If Christy Nome comes here on the stage, you better believe it, I'll act burly, and you better believe it, I'll act strong, and you better believe it, I'll preach my heart out, because I don't want a woman to outdo me. But I tell you what, she outdoes a lot of men. She outdoes a lot of little Bidens. I'm sorry. She outdoes a lot of, lot, a lot of, lot of other people. Okay, a lot of other people. I mean, I like it when she steps behind a podium and kind of wipes her hair and says, our state is doing well because of what I did. And then I see Ron DeSantis. I'm just saying this is Father's Day. I'm just saying somebody needs to take a stand. Sometimes in the Bible time, the people of Israel had a woman leading them as a judge, but she was no pushover. We need people that will take a stand. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Since when is a church gathering supposed to be illegal? Folks, I'm a little upset. I'm a little upset. When our premier turns the switch off, then they can do thousands of people, and nobody gets a fine on Tuesday, on Thursday, and on Saturday. And of course, we believe that we should be there for a hurting family. Nothing wrong with that. That was right. What's not right is that the churches don't stand up. I'll tell you one thing. If the churches would stand up like they need to, it's over today. They would know you don't touch God's apple of the eye. You don't poke God's God in the eye. You don't do that. But here we are. And thanks to the COVID agenda, God helped me to grow some more beard. God helped me to become more of a man. And by God's grace, we will stand regardless of the consequences. 
Brothers, fathers, I'll close with this. Let's have a continuous Father's Day. God bless you. Where is it? Could you all look back here? The police drone just arrived. Right back here. Wave to them. There's a police drone. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Wave to the Elmer police drone. Oh, oh, it's leaving. Oh, oh, it's coming. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Look at the police drone. Everybody, here it is. We're having a wonderful church meeting. And we're calling on you, a drone operator. How about you become? How about you stop being a noodle back? How about you become what you need to become? All right. All right. Let me step back. All right. All right. Let's see if they can hear me. Where's the drone now? Oh, there it is. It just went up a bit. All right. Let's watch the drone. Amazing surveillance. If only they knew that our parking lot is big enough, they could all be on here. They would not have to fly the drone. It's, there's, a, there's, there's one thing nicer than looking from a drone. It's when you're right here. Yes. If you can be just right in person. There they are. There they are. Isn't it amazing? In Elmer, Ontario, Canada, we're surveilled by a drone. There he comes. There he comes. There he goes. There he goes. Please don't fall down now. Actually, this morning, actually, no, right now, he's illegal because he's in our airspace. So right now, he's illegal. He's interfering with the service. God save your souls, drone operators, Elmer police, everyone. What has happened to your mind? Why are you all wearing a pink hat? How about you would become real man? And let us know that we're not behind communist uh, Cuba. How about we would just all recognize a church service is 100% legal under no circumstances. Will you tell us what to do? Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Well, let's not waste too much time on the drone. Let's thank the Lord for the food. And let's go eat. If there's anyone in this audience this morning that wishes that they could be more of a man like they should be and desires prayer, desires, we could talk about it. Every service that we finish here, you're always invited to come, to pray, to seek help. Let's pray that we would be all the Lord wants us to be. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for uh, your time this morning, for listening, for being a wonderful, wonderful audience. Thank you for those watching live listening in. God bless you. Let's close with prayer as we thank the Lord for the food as well. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for all you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for those that are flying the drone over here. Lord, speak to them, dear God. Lord, that they would want a closer look. Help them, oh God. Lord, save their souls. Help our governments. Oh God, help our governments to be men. But Lord, help us to do something about it where we can. Father, we are in this audience here this morning. And we want to be a real, true man of God. Help us, oh God, that we would be all you're wanting us to be, dear Father. Bless the food that's been prepared as we go into the second stage of our morning service. Bless, Lord, we pray, Father, in Jesus' holy name.